It's been a while since we've had a Nintendo game on the show, but today's new game for an old console is one of my all-time favorite card games. We're going to be checking out Garbage Pal Kids for the Nintendo Entertainment System. My name's Mike, and this is the Retro Gamer Boy Show. <laughs> Before I got my legendary Sega Master System, I got an awesome Nintendo Entertainment System. It was, and still is today, a system that I love playing, not least because it has one of my favourite gaming IPs on it, The Legend of Zelda. The NES, like the Sega Mega Drive, has one of the most active indie dev scenes on it, making brand new games and mods for the console. Another thing I love about the NES is the era it was released in, the 80s. I was an 80s child and spent my time in Goonie-like BMX gangs, strapping six skateboards to a cardboard box and racing down the road with cars trying to avoid us, practically living in the arcades and collecting and playing with Garbage Pail Kid cards. As well as the games, I loved Garbage Pail Kids. The designs were so edgy and cool. I loved trying to get all the cards to build the big card on the back. And of course, there was the gum you got with the cards that made the cards smell so amazing. And who can forget the Garbage Pail Kids movie? So you can imagine my excitement when I found out that there's going to be a new NES physical game based on the Garbage Pail Kids. Now in this review, I'll be taking the original Nintendo Entertainment System's back catalogue as the baseline for quality. The new Garbage Pail Kids for the NES tells the story of events after the short film Mad Mike Fury Load. If you've not seen this 10 minute short, I'll leave a link in the description. After his last adventure, Mike goes in search of gum at Top's factory. He meets Brainy Janie, who is more than happy to make him some. But Mad Mike doesn't want the new stuff. He needs stale gum. Janie can accommodate this, but Mike will need to travel through time to get six ingredients needed to make the stale gum. And so with this tenuous but classic Garbage Pail Kids plot revealed, it's time to get into the game. The cool gameplay in Garbage Pail Kids Mad Mike The Quest for Stale Gum is platforming, but to say that this is just your run-of-the-mill platformer would be doing it an injustice. The dev team had layered on some meta gameplay to modernise the game, despite it being on an old system, and some cool collection mechanics. As a platformer, you have all the traditional traversal mechanics, move left and right, jump and attack. You can also move down platforms by pressing down and jump. Moving the character on screen feels satisfying, the jump has some real weight to it, so it's easy to predict where and how you're going to land. The levels are also well structured, if not just a little simple in places, and either signpost or foreshadow your next move or direction. The team have built in verticality into the level design, which mixes things up for the standard horizontal levels and also makes for some decent, dedicated vertical gameplay. Now, there are a number of meta systems in the game that really lift this title above your standard platformers on the NES. The first is that you have four characters to choose from as you make your way through the levels. Each character can be swapped in at any point during the game and they all offer up different skill sets. Patty Putty is able to jump or bounce high, allowing you to get to new platforms. Patty's attacks, though, are risky as you need to bounce on the enemies to dispatch them. Luke Puke has a short range, low fire rate puke attack. His puke though acts both as an acid and as a landmine. As you vomit on the platform, it will drop down to the next platform and will continue to drop down until it hits solid ground, killing any enemies on its way down. If you puke on solid ground, it stays there until an enemy walks over it and dies. Leaky Lindsay is an out and out range attack character and probably the most used character in the game. And lastly, we have our main character, Mad Mike, who is a close combat character. All four characters have their uses, but the game could have done more with their skills. I'm thinking puzzles or gating mechanics that utilize the individual skills. As it is, I found myself mostly playing with Leaky Lindsay and her ranged attacks and switching to Patty Putty when I needed to get somewhere high up. The other two characters were backups in case I die, which brings us nicely onto the health mechanics. 
Every time you're hit, including enemies or objects, you'll lose half a heart. Unless, of course, you fall down an infinite pit, in which case you're dead. Each character has four hearts, and once these are gone, you respawn at your last checkpoint with one of your remaining characters. You can pick up health from trash cans, and you can also pick up garbage, which powers your trash meter. Once your trash meter is full, you can activate invincibility mode. As well as trash and health, you can also grab yourself a trading card from the trash cans. Trading cards are both collectibles and power cards. No, not all cards have powers, only a few of them do. For example, the Mad Max card resurrects fallen characters, which is really useful. Buggy Betty enables you to fly, Live Mike stuns enemies on the screen, and Adam Bomb deals three damage to all nearby enemies. Most of the time, you'll find only standard cards in the trash cans, which are great to collect, but you can also trade them in for power cards or cards that you're missing from your collection. Trading cards can only be done at certain points in a level and only with certain characters. When you find a character who wants to trade, you get the option to pick cards from your deck to trade for the card they are holding. Now, you can't just trade one card for another. If you want a rare or power card, you may need to trade several cards. You keep adding cards until they accept. You can add up to four cards within a single trade. The Mad Max card can be particularly expensive to trade for. Using the cards is nice and quick as well. If you find yourself in some trouble, simply press the pause button and you will be taken to the card selection window. Here you can select power cards or browse through your collection. You can even select another character to play with. There are a total of six levels in the game and each level has an end of level boss to defeat. Defeating the boss will give you an ingredient for your stale gum. The bosses are fairly simple to beat and rely on being hit from either above or from the front. Structurally, you'll get an avoidance and defense phase where the bosses are protected or cannot be hit and you'll have to dodge and attack enemies. Then it's followed by the attack phase where you can deal damage to the bosses. There's no health indicator for the boss and there's no standard set number of attacks like the three hits found in Zelda games. It's not a bad thing and can keep you on edge. The six worlds are diverse and offer up some nice variation in the platforming gameplay. The first level sees you travel back to the Stone Age, then it's off to 80s Tokyo in Japan. Ancient Egypt is next, followed by Transylvania, then Mars, and finally Hell Eternity. Visually, the game can be impressive in parts. The majority of the level art is well drawn, with some narrative storytelling going on. There are sections within each level where the level art really stands out and is up there with some of the best NES games. I particularly love the boss sprites, they're really well realized and the Garbage Pail Kids IP can really be seen in these characters. Some of the levels have some nice parallax scrolling going on in the background. The Egypt level is impressive for this and there's some really detailed areas which I just stopped in to look at the visuals. The one thing that really stood out for me is how much variation was found in each level. Each level can be made up of three or four sections, and each one of these can be significantly different from the last. It makes playing through the game a real pleasure, and whilst the gameplay remains fundamentally the same, the universe feels like it's always evolving. The character designs are where the limitations of the hardware hold back the potential of this IP. The thing I love about Garbage Pail Kids is the details in the characters. Don't get me wrong, the artists have done a great job in trying to get these characters to fit in 32 pixels. There's some real skill in doing that. But at the same time, it's almost impossible to tell what some of the character cards are supposed to be. The bosses, on the other hand, are excellently drawn and really show off those characters. Animation is another area where all NES games struggle, but the quest for stale gum does have some nice incidental animation and particles. There are some nice flourishes with dripping slime, parallax scrolling, spinning fans, flames, flies, lava, and flowing water. The enemies and characters are limited to a few frames of animations, and the bosses are very static, with some restricted to just blinking. Again, these are more down to technical limitations rather than developer skill. Audio design has all the right beeps and blips for jumping, attacking, and dying. There's nothing that would stand out for me though. No iconic sound effects like the red or green mushrooms in Mario or even the Superstar. The same goes for the soundtrack. It's varied and pleasant enough to listen to, but nothing that competes with Zelda, Mega Man, Metroid or DuckTales. 
You might think that those are unfair comparisons, but all those games were the first in their series, and the soundtracks helped them to become more memorable. Again, Quest for Stale Gum doesn't have a bad soundtrack, it's just not one that's going to stick in my head. Get your grimy little hands on the most disgusting game ever made. Garbage Pail Kids, Mad Mike, and the quest for stale gum. Defeat tweets with diaper-enhanced butt slams. Axe and ooze your way across the globe to recover the secret stale gum recipe before it falls into the wrong hands. Four playable characters, six punishing levels. Use the in-game trading cards to gain devastating abilities. Trade to collect them all. Bonus digital and behind-the-scenes content. Pooping and farting. Make politicians puke. Make your grandparents sick. Play the most disgusting retro game never released. If you dare, get Garbage Pail Kids, Mad Mike, and the Quest for Stale Gum digitally now. I've enjoyed my time with the Quest for Stale Gum. It's a really solid platformer game. The traversal mechanics are really weighty and feel great as you move through the different levels. I love the extra meta elements they add to them. Changing characters, different power-ups, collecting cards. All of those things make for a really cohesive experience. The visuals are really nice as well, and there's some absolute standout moments in the game, especially when you're fighting those bosses and you can see the characters in all of their 8-bit glory. Sound implementation, whilst not being the best in the world, is still very solid, something you'll be able to tap your foot along to and won't get on your nerves as you play through the game. Now I'm going to be giving this game a silver Retro Gamer Boy coin, but wait! The nostalgia of Garbage Pal Kids, playing on the Nintendo Entertainment System. It felt like Christmas 1987, and because of that nostalgia, I'm going to give it a gold Retro Gamer Boy coin. Now if you want to get your hands on a physical copy of this game, you better act quickly. There's only 4,000 of them. I'll put a link in the description of where you can buy them. But you can also pick this up digitally. You can buy it on Steam, PlayStation 4, and on the Nintendo Switch. And you get a ton of extra stuff with these digital versions. You get that short movie that I spoke of that you can also check out in the link in the description. You get a load of makings of, you get to see the cards, there's galleries, there's music libraries, there's a ton of stuff on there for you to experience. Now, if you enjoy videos like this, if you like finding out about brand new games for old classic consoles, if you love retro gaming, if you love the Sega Mega Drive and Genesis, then why not consider subscribing? You can do this by clicking on a little button just beneath this video. We put out brand new shows every single Monday, and so that you don't miss one, make sure you also click on the little bell notification below this video. Now, if you can't wait till Monday, if that's far too long, don't worry, because we've got a huge back catalogue of retro gaming videos for you to enjoy, two of which you can watch over here.